But what I'm going to show you is something that all takes place over a period of about 12 minutes. I can break it down for you and show you how it goes. This is last night. It's actually early this morning. It's just after 2 a.m. local time in Austin, Travis County Democratic Party headquarters. Roll the first video. And the, the vantage point here is an external security camera on the Democratic Party headquarters building in Austin. The dude obviously throws a rock, some sort of projectile, maybe chunk, chunk of concrete or something, and then he kind of prances away to the lower left-hand side of the screen afterwards. Now let's show the next clip. Look again at the, the timestamp here. Just a few seconds later, there's about five seconds later, when the guy scampered off to the lower left of the screen, he was obviously picking back up whatever he had been throwing. The dude comes back in from the lower left side of the screen. He makes another go of it. He throws that rock or that chunk of concrete or whatever it is, throws it at the same target harder, but from a different angle. And again, he sort of scampers away. Now, different camera, same time. We have an interior view of that exact same moment. Again, check the timestamp. You can see it's the same timestamp here, 2.06 a.m., 45, 46, 47, 48 seconds. And you can see here, again, we're looping this so you can see it, as the guy, whatever it is, this rock, this chunk of concrete, he's throwing it at the Democratic Party headquarters. He actually breaks the window. You can see it come through the window. Now watch this. Look at the timestamp here. It's not 2.06 a.m. anymore. It's taken him about five minutes, four and a half minutes. Uh, to go away, and he's come back with something in his left hand walking down that same sidewalk. And you get a, a good view of his various head adornments here. Um, but most clearly, you see something in his left hand. Looks like a bottle with something sticking out of the top of it. And you see as he walks by the building where he just threw the rock through the window down low by the ground. Look, see how he looks at it? He looks at that spot where he just threw the rock through the window. He looks at that closely as he walks by, just before he walks off the bottom. See him check out his handiwork? That's 2.11 a.m. Now, two minutes later, it's 2.13 a.m. See the timestamp? Yes. Dude walks back the other way, crouches down, and puts something in there. And we know what it is he was dropping in there at 2.13 a.m. because we have an internal view. We have that internal camera at that same time. Again, look at the timestamp, 2.13. And you can see that what he put through that window, what he put through the broken glass where he broke the window with that rock, it is on fire. Some kind of lit incendiary device and what appears to be that bottle with the rag sticking out of the top of it that he was carrying in his left hand down the street just a moment ago. But then four and a half, five minutes down the road, the guy comes back. And again, this is an internal view from the internal security camera. Look at the timestamp, 218. Dude comes back, puts something else on fire through the broken glass that he smashed where the fire and smoke had already started. And as you can see, this time he gets what he was looking for. And curiously, um, we also know that the dude almost blows himself up in the process here. And we know that because of, again, the external view. Look at the timestamp. Can also tell you from that external view, uh, thankfully, not long after, just moments later, we see a neighbor, a neighbor arrive from across the street with a fire extinguisher. There he is. First of all, thank you to the neighbor. But second of all, they only had those cameras because of the previous attack on their offices at the Democratic Party in Travis County, Texas. Now, we can tell you tonight that the party has been told the FBI is treating this as a credible threat. We can also tell you this attack was accompanied by a written threat to Texas Democrats. The exact content or any sort of visual of that written threat is not being released for security purposes. But we are told tonight is it is an explicitly political threat. The note says, in essence, this is a warning. This will continue to happen because Democrats can keep states like New York and Texas, excuse me, New York and California, but not Texas. And that note delivered alongside that Molotov cocktail and those other incendiaries, and the broken window. Violence and intimidation as a means of sort of trying to either achieve a political end or defeat political processes, they don't go away on their own. Violence and intimidation, if you get away with them, they take root. They become the norm, unless they are punished. In this case, this stuff isn't, hasn't been punished thus far. And in fact, it's been celebrated and encouraged and cheered 
by the political party it's been designed to benefit. Unless this stuff is punished, it is emboldening for the people who get away with it because they know that intimidation and threats work. After the Biden bus was attacked on I-35 in Texas just before the election, they didn't do their events that night. And you can't blame them for doing it. But physical violence and intimidation worked in that instance. Physical violence and intimidation works unless it's punished. And when it isn't punished, when people get away with it, they do it more. We now have a political party on the right that isn't interested in condemning stuff like this at all and, in fact, has praised it from the highest levels and even from the side of the party that's supposedly the reasonable side, Senator Rubio. We ought to know what we can expect from our society, our government, our law enforcement for the perpetrators of this kind of thing, for people who commit political violence and intimidation. That needs to work better than it has, particularly in Texas, as Texas Democrats have come under now repeated and increasingly frequent violent intimidation. But, you know, they're not, the, the people doing this aren't the only side of the story. We also need to look in on the folks who are targeted with this kind of intimidation and violence to see how it changes them and to see what we can do to hold them up. Joining us now is Katie Naranjo. She is the chair of the Travis County Democratic Party in Texas. Her office was vandalized last night. Um, Ms. Naranjo, I really appreciate you making time to be with us tonight. I'm sure it's a stressful time. Definitely been an eventful morning, to say the least. Well, first of all, let me tell you if I explained any of that wrong or in, in walking through that security footage, if, if that seems to you and your colleagues to be sort of the way this unfolded and the, the, the scope of the attack. In working with the Austin Fire Department, uh, as well as the FBI, it is our understanding that that definitely is how events went, that, uh, in fact, uh, it was due to the ineptitude of, uh, of the perpetrator or domestic terrorist, if you will, because he fits the definition of it, that, that were it not for his uh, inability to actually make the bomb go off, that our office would definitely have been uh, put up into flames. And it's thankful to, to uh, Blake, who works at Latchkey Bar, that we were able to still come back to an office um, and that we didn't have an entire office up in flames. Uh, ultimately, the, the Molotov cocktail, uh, which was then followed by those fireworks, actually didn't explode. And so that's why we were able to um, still have an office standing. And frankly, the, the letter that was accompanied with that did come with a warning. And it was a clear message of, uh, you know, political uh, nature, but more importantly, intimidation. And I, I wanted to share a message, if you don't mind, with, with the person who left Please. us the message. Democrats in Please. Texas are unafraid. We have fought my entire life and for generations for the rights of Black, Brown, Yellow, Hispanic, Black, uh, Asian, and, and white Americans to vote. We're fighting for your vote, too. And we're fighting for our right to free speech. And we will fight every day at the ballot box. So you may try to throw small bombs into our office, but we will be there at the ballot box this November voting and in the Democratic primary in 2022 and the general election in 2022. And we will make sure our voice is heard because you will not silence us. There are more of us than you. You represent a small minority of hateful right-wing extremists. And I represent teachers, students, healthcare workers, small business owners, union members, artists, and everyone in our community, because we are gonna to stand together united. We are one Travis County, we're one Democratic Party, but more importantly, we are one state and one country devoted to the democratic process and our right to vote.